host Sophia here from mygreatchallenge.blogspot.com. I'm back in the office. Today I'm starting the caulking and the priming of the two shelves that I've built that are suspended on the wall on either side of the office. So it's this one right here and the one over there that's going to be above my husband's desk. All right, let me get started. start with my uh, caulking gun which is not an easy thing to use but I mean it, at least it's not easy to remove this thing and replace it the one I'm using is DAP uh, let me see 100% waterproof window door and trim sealant this is a paintable one and it's white and what I did is cut the tip right here but very very small because I have thin lines that I need to make. I don't need to put a lot of caulk. I just want to finish up the lines so that the uh, transition between the bookcase or the bookshelf, for instance, and the window right here, it's going to be very, very small. I want to have the look of built-in. So I don't want to have a big blob of that uh, caulking. I just want a little fine line. So let's find out whether or not this is going to work. Okay, so I'm going to start right here with this transition here. Uh, I haven't used one of those guns in a long time, so I don't know whether or not it's going to work, but let's find out. Right, here we go. So I'm just gently pressing and filling the gap. So you want to have Ideally, you want to do just one pass, but obviously, I'm not very good at it. Now, always have paper towels with you because what's going to happen here is that I'm probably going to have to go over with my finger. And use a paper towel right there to remove the excess. Hoping you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna flatten it as much as I can. All right, good. Let me do the corner. I'm just gonna go like this. Same thing. And again, this is paintable. I could do a clear one, but I picked white instead, just in case I need to go over it again. Uh, let me get the excess out. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. Or not. Okay, so I'm doing a very lousy job because really I don't know how to caulk. Uh, all I know is it's got to be done. So I have all of my little seams here and then the one right here and all of the ones here and on top and the one over there. So the advantage of it is that since it's going to be painted, you're not really going to be able to see um, the caulk, but I'm trying to like make it as flat and kind of straight as possible. Um, again, the goal is just to remove the transitions between pieces of wood so that it kind of looks like it's a built-in and completely integrated. Um, once it's painted, I really don't know what it's going to look like. I guess we'll judge at that point whether or not I did a good job. Um, I'm not happy with it <laughs> because really, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to work with caulk at all. It's sticky. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going too fast and it feels like I got too much pressure um, here, so the stuff just keeps on globbing out of it. All right, let me move my husband's um, desk a little bit, and I'm going to tackle this one once I'm done with caulking this. This probably is going to get dried, so at that point I'll start the primer on this shelf. So I'm done with the other one, and uh, I'm really lousy at this caulking thing, i got to be honest. I have no idea what it's going to look like once it's uh, painted. I'm hoping it doesn't show. 
but I had a big gap over there so I had to put a lot but I can't go all the way to the end um, one way one reason is because I don't want to touch the paint but all right um, let me see where we with this this is almost uh, it is dry already oh well, that's good so I'm gonna start painting um, with the primer so let me find it first let me see what do we have we have the kills pro x interior primer uh, PVA P10 water base tintable so this is white fast drying seals porous surfaces easy cleanup so I'm hoping the easy cleanup part of it is uh, true and accurate um, all right, let me get my stuff I just need a, uh, a towel to put on the floor so that I can uh, put my big tub and then I have the brush already I need a small container to put the brush in and yeah we're gonna start with this one right there so the primer I'm using that kills primer like every primer is super super thick so I can't really use a roll on it I'm pretty much stuck with having to do it at the, with the brush which pretty much means I'm gonna take forever to do this so let me start here and the goal of doing the primer first whenever you work with wood like pine for instance first of all it, it just blocks the color that's behind it so you can taint it as well so for instance when we painted the uh, dining room red for some reason um, the yellow that was underneath it originally and the blue was still showing so we had to go and get a primer that was almost an orange color to put behind it so that way when we put the red it wouldn't seep through I don't know if I'm making sense so generally speaking the primer is just to prep your surface make it um, you know smoother that's why it's thick but it's also color blocking and in this case I'm not using it for that purpose I'm only using it for the purpose of not having the knots in my pine wood show over time because there's still some sap inside the wood and if I have like big knots like maybe you can see them in the corner over there right here right eventually over time let's say two years from now I'm going to start having yellow marks on my white paint so you prime the wood first that way it basically stops the sap from bleeding through and you keep your bookshelf white all right so and again I am not using a tape because I never do I don't have time for that. I have a few areas where I need to touch up with blue anyway. So if I do have a little bit of a, uh, um, you know, a spill or something, I'll just go and cover it with the blue when I'm doing the touch up. Uh, one side I didn't paint with the primer yet and here's the side I just finished just to give you a quick look at what it would look like once it's white um, the caulking doesn't show underneath maybe like some areas right here but I, I'll be able to brush it off once I have another layer of uh, paint I'm not gonna do two coat I'm just doing one I have to read the instructions see maybe if I do require two but I have to say that this is very very this is very thick paint um, so it's going to take me a while to get the shelves done. I'm definitely not done today. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was going to be done today. Uh, yeah, Scott is not coming to a, uh, a white bookcase office tonight. There's no way I'm going to finish this. Um, it's, it takes a while with the uh, primer because it's very, very thick. So you have to layer it on and layer it on and layer it on until you get the coverage that you need. I don't want to try it with the roll. Because I think it's too thick and it's just going to make like ripples in, a, in it. So I'm just going to keep at it with the brush um, and just do it that way. And then once I'm done with that one, I'll do the other one. But I think that's all I'm going to be able to do today because uh, it's uh, painstaking. It's sticking forever. And for some reason, on the window, the, um, the leftover caulk that I had a little bit is turning gray. So, now it is white. It's not gray. I don't know why it's showing gray. So I might have to 
kind of repaint the side of the window a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Okay, uh, let me finish this and then I'll give you a look once it's kind of semi-white because the uh, primer is not covering 100%. You can still see a little bit of the wood color underneath it. And then I'll tackle the other one. I hope you can see me. I finally managed my way through to doing the underside. Um, I mean, you have to do it because I'm going to be sitting right here and I'm going to be seeing it all the time and that's where I'm putting the lights. So if the background is white, obviously the light is going to reflect more. But i got to be honest, this is a dreadful task. The whole idea of priming this before painting it is awful. It is so difficult. One, the paint is super thick. Two, even though I sanded my wood, the brush is dragging on it. I can only go in one direction. I can't go against the grain. Um, I'm having difficulty reaching some corners. I'm putting pieces of paper, like you see, like the ones right here. I'm putting those um, underneath. Actually, I'm going to do that now. So that way I can paint against the, uh, the wall, even though I said I don't use paint to tape, and you know I don't. Um, it's just, you know, making it easier for me because this is dreadful enough as it is. Now, on top of that, I have to be careful as to, you know, how I'm doing the painting. So, rather than just doing my usual, which is having a steady hand and doing the best I can, I need to, like, literally do this and get done with it because this is just taking forever. It literally took me almost two hours to do this, uh, this part right here. Almost two hours. So it's probably going to take me three and a half hours to do the one above my husband's desk and five hours to do the big one. This is insane. Um, this is by far, I kid you not, by far my most ambitious project ever. This whole office makeover. I mean it is in terms of the construction but now all of the fine detailing like the painting and all of that, it is so time consuming and difficult. It's not easy at all to do so. I think that if I was going to do that over, I probably would stain the wood rather than uh, paint it white. Or I would try to figure out a way to measure everything, build it, disassemble it, paint it and reassemble it and just do the, um, um, you know, the little pieces here and there where I have scratches, dents, whatever just a touch up because the whole painting this thing once it's been assembled on the wall is so difficult I mean it really is and you know me I'm ambitious I don't bulk at hard task at all I mean the bigger the challenge the better but this is just like nonsense seriously this is nonsense oh goodness and I'm hungry <laughs> that doesn't help at all I hate painting upside down too hence the reason why I don't paint the ceilings and I know a lot of you have commented about that how come I didn't paint my ceiling well the ceiling looks a little bit off-white kind of grayish and I'm going to put curtains that are gray in here so that's kind of like matching and the ceiling is not dirty or doesn't have any spots or anything if there is anything I'll take a magic sponge to take care of it but I absolutely hate painting ceilings the whole I don't know it, it's not that it makes me dizzy I have no upper arm strengths whatsoever so for me to be painting a ceiling, it takes so much and I just hate it, so I just don't do it, period. Alright, let me finish this fine. has been primed so you get to see from far away what it looks like when it's white as opposed to the wood one obviously um, I only did one coat except for those areas where I could see that there was a knot from the pine wood those areas I went over two times and sometimes three times with the uh, primer because like I said the last thing I want from uh, two years from now is to see those knots and the oil from the pine tree um, coming out so that's pretty much what it looks like when it's done primed once um, yeah I'm liking it I mean obviously it's beautiful when it's white it's gonna look even better when I have the uh, actual paint on it with the gloss it's gonna be exactly the same thing 
than the window uh, frame and um, you know the closet frame right here it looks really really good I'm not gonna say it doesn't the problem is just like it is so painstaking to do this all right uh, I have to eat some lunch and then I'm gonna start on this one over there obviously I'm gonna be finished with this today and then what I'll probably do in another video tomorrow I'll uh, I'll tackle this one this one is going to be a little bit different because this is where most of our heavy stuff is going to go and as you know the shelves are a little uh, a little wobbly so I need to toenail them at an angle first um, and make sure that they are nice and secure and in the front rather than kind of like moving backwards you see like this so I have to do that so that's probably going to be in the next video it was used to yesterday we still have chocolate and I didn't have a single one so yeah all right lunch time and then I'll tackle this one uh, I'm done. I'm done with my primer for those two bookcases or bookshelves, whatever you want to call them. This was um, dreadful and I think I said that already. So here it is. It's painted and I did the same thing here than I did with the other one which basically is um, the underside right here. Let me show you real quick. So you see that got painted and I have those spots that you see here and there. Is the uh, don't mind the noise. I have a neighbor who's uh, cutting wood somewhere. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so I did a second coat where I have the knots from the uh, pine wood just to make sure that this is properly sealed and I'm not going to get any stains years down the road. Um, it's starting to get a little bit dark because it's about 6 30 in the afternoon. I have to go downstairs and make dinner, but basically, this is what it looks like. So, again, this is just with the primer. So imagine what it's going to look like when it's entirely painted I still have to do um because I forgot those little uh recesses here that's from when I um uh, countersink the nails so I have to put a little bit of um white putty in there and then um I'll do that right before I paint I guess with the uh um the white high gloss paint but yeah that's what it looks like all right so I'm not going to show you the whole process for the large one because it's pretty much the same thing so the next time you will see me I uh, probably will have completed the primer on the big shelf and probably would have painted everything because there's no point of me doing a video where I'm just showing you you know the whole painting process because it's just really painting so I just wanted to show you kind of like an idea you know of what it's gonna look like when it's white and yeah so that's probably what I'm gonna do tomorrow I'm gonna do the uh, large one then I'll paint everything so the next video will be the building of the counter yes I'm finally at that stage so it's the counter then it's refinishing the floor now the counter the cabinet that goes under the counter then I'm refinishing the floor and finally will be done so there's probably another three videos in this series on the makeover and then the last one will be a final tour once I have everything back in it so hopefully I'll be done in two weeks um probably be done in two weeks uh, this was a long project I can't I don't know what I'm stepping on this was a long project I can't even remember when I started I think I started the last week in January and with the first week in April so obviously it's over two months but it gives you an idea of how long it takes to entirely rehab a room like this and again the room is not large granted I wasn't working on it every day but if you were doing it every weekend that probably would come down to the same amount of uh, time so yeah it takes about two and a half to three months to do something like this and then I still have to redo the uh, guest bedroom because it's chaotic in there but that's probably gonna be easier once I have everything out and back in here all right so thank you for watching um wait for my next video at which point i'll have again everything painted with the high gloss and we'll start building the counter give me a thumbs up if you like this video look at all the paint i have this i need a shower i'm gonna do that before i go um make dinner so anyway thank you for watching this video give me a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you knew Check out all of the other video in the home office makeover. The link is at the end. It starts from the before tour all the way up to now. I think I have 14 videos. So I'm really stretching this project as much as I can because I know you guys like watching me um, go through projects. And I don't like it when I see videos where they tell you, you know, hey, we're going to build this today. And they skip through so many parts. You basically enjoy the after, but you have no clue how they did it. So... 
hopefully I've shown you how to do it, you've enjoyed it, and you've learned. I'll talk to you later. Bye!